So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ECF Academy July session. Um, today, we are joined by Marin, who's a Croatian Grandmaster, and he'll introduce himself in a moment. Um, let me just um, show you. So he is um, a Croatian Master, and here's some of his achievements. He's been a Grandmaster since 2008. His peak rating was 2648 and was the Croatian national champion in 2017 and 2019, uh, gold medalist and second board in the European team championships, and a member of the national team on the second board. So um, I think it's quite nice to get a variety of grandmasters joining us for this session. And uh, next month, we've got David Smerden joining. So um, Marin is going to, um, I'm going to ask him a few questions about his chess career, and then he's going to show us some more advanced end games than the material you've been doing this month. So um, when did you start playing chess, Marin? So hi, Sarah. Hey, hi, everybody. I started to play chess at the uh, age of five and a half, and I started to play in the club. But with brother, I started to play even earlier. So I think it's it's a long time in chess already. I'm 33 now, and I think it's already 28 years. And <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and how much chess practice did you do as a child? Okay, I did it, uh, I think, maybe four times in the club for two hours, so eight hours in the club. And I very early, I started to, to work by myself and I just started to study some books. And it was it a was, uh, big love for chess, you know, and it was just some, somehow natural and easy to work, work on chess in that age. I was just, I liked it very much. Excellent. Um, so um, a few people are um, struggling to join, so I'm just helping them now. Um, they got the wrong link. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Um, just let me know how many hours practice you've been doing. No, these days. Yes, these days. And in the okay. run up to getting your Grandmaster title. Uh -huh. It depends. I, yeah, I became a Grandmaster with 20 years old and then I studied uh, economics, you know, I didn't have so much time, you know, but, uh, but I worked always on chess, of course. But after finishing uh, economics, I became professional and professional player. And then I started to work more and okay, it depends, you know, uh, before Corona, it was a lot of tournaments, so it was not easy to work so much on chess, but now these days I'm working quite, quite a lot. Yeah, quite a lot. And what's about the run up to becoming a grandmaster? How much effort did that involve? Yeah, I think uh, it it takes a lot of efforts, you know. Um, but what I said, uh, it's it's easy when you love, love the chess, you know, and then then it's easy to work and somehow it, it's natural, you know. You just are it's, you are, you are very interested in in uh, in chess, and then it's easier to study, and you don't you don't um, feel that efforts, you know, so much. It's somehow but when you become professional and when you need to improve you know when you do have a little bit more pressure than when you are studying then then it's then it's uh, it's it's bigger efforts I, I would say excellent um so um have you had any major setbacks in your journey and how did you overcome them of course yes it, it was a lot of uh, bad results and uh, but you just need to keep work, you know, and then in one moment, I think everything, it will be good. It's important to be persistent and to work and um, somehow even even some some uh, some game I lost, uh, it helped me, you know, because I changed some something in my repertoire, in my work, you know, so every this fall, you know, helped me sometimes uh, even to improve later and uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a normal in chess. It's normal in, in every sport. Excellent. So more people have just joined the meeting. We've got um, Grandmaster Marin from Croatia talking to us today, and um, just been asking him some questions about how he got to Grandmaster and what happens uh, when he has setbacks on the journey. Because I'm sure you'll agree, Marin, it's not an easy ride. Um, no, it's uh, not easy. It's not like uh, it's always going good. You know, it's. Uh, you are going a little bit step uh, up and then step under and then but if you are working you are just slowly you are improving you know and if you are working systematically then uh, maybe 
uh, result will not come uh, very very uh, very fast you know but if when the result will come they will be, they will be more how to say uh, stable later you know and it's 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 a normal it's a normal journey but it's not easy journey i mean just it's not easy definitely so when you lose a bad game what do you do uh this is like a very difficult but do you throw like, pieces everywhere <laughs> <laughs> not not that but it's it's not easy you know when you miss some chance to win the tournament or something like this it's it's never easy but it's somehow with years you know with experience it's easier it's easier than you then you know that you had already some mistakes, some uh, bad games, and it's easier. And you know that after that, uh, it will become, it will come new tournament, and maybe you will have more chances to to make something. And it's it's uh, it's with experience, it's easier. And do you analyze all your games, including the ones you win? Uh, yes, I, I try to analyze after the game, the games, of course. I think it's it's very important. Do you analyze them without an engine first? Uh, sometimes, yes. It's it's a um, it's a slower work, but um, it, it's the best work. Yeah, when you analyze alone and when you spend even five hours per game, you know, then with computer analysis, but first uh, without engines, it's it's a great thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. Great, fantastic. So um, Marin's going to be showing us um, some more advanced end games from the material that you've been covering this month. Um, people that have just joined, um, do you want to say hi in the chat? And then Marin's going to share his screen now, and we're going to look through some end games to start with. And then we've got some interesting middle games as well, if we've got time. So, um, Marin, do you want to take over the screen share now then? Okay, I will do that in just a second. Okay. So, we will start uh, with end games, what, what you mentioned. And... Uh, First, we will, we will start with uh, this one endgame. I think it's it's very important. It, it's a rook endgame, but rook against pawns. And maybe you can take some time to find the best move for black. Okay, so black to play. What should black play? Black, you can black to play. answer to the panelists only, please, um, with your answer. There's no um, rush. We've already had a correct answer coming through from Kenneth. Well done. Exactly, Kenneth uh, say this is like the right move. Excellent, King of three, King of three, and uh, it's a shouldering. It's a quite uh, quite typical method. And now, when he play King d five, King d three, and now it's shouldering. He cannot bring his his king near near the pawn. It's only one way how, how to make a draw. And now after rook e eight, King d three, rook e eight, and f three, and now rook 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 e six. King it two, king it four, he tweets obvious that. I pause for a moment there. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> I was going to ask them what they play there. Yeah, it's it's um, uh, so it's it's it, a night of one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, just to let people know, is this position? Do you think this is still okay for a draw for black? Yeah, it's it, this is like theoretical draw, and um, I, I know, but I'm asking them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um. Let's let's have a look. Um, Fork Power says Rook versus Knight Fortress. Yeah, it does depend on the position of the Knight and the King. Um, mm -hmm. But do you want to show them why this is a fortress then, please? Uh, yes, for instance, if you play King of three, then we can give check. And I think he cannot improve. What he can do, he, he need to be King uh, very near the King, but King of three, Knight of one, if he play like that move, he cannot improve. He cannot mate me, he cannot take my my knight, so I think it's it's easy draw. Yeah, it's it's just there is no no improvement. And but maybe we can we can start with another one. You want to go back to the original position and just mm -hmm. um, show them what happens if um, you uh -huh. do the more obvious move of King G three. Just go exactly. through that, please. Exactly, maybe King G three or F three even. Yeah, sure. But on King of three, you see King D five is coming. And now on King G three, King G four. Now I'm tempo down, yeah. King three and it's it's a draw. It's a winning for 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 white. But King of three, it's excellent move, excellent move, and um, yeah, there is there is no no improvement. Only move logical is King d five, and then King three, it's it's just equal, yeah. It's it's this position, it's forced. Just shielding the king from getting through. Exactly, um, exactly. Okay. Anyone got any questions on that? Does that all make sense? Let us know in the chat. 
You don't want to go too quickly. And that's very important to know because it's very easy to think that you just play F3, um, but you need to block White's King from coming yeah, through. It's a typical method shouldering. It's, but it's a very important one, you know. And I think uh, our next example will be connected with this, but a little bit different, yeah. Okay, so in the next example, um, let's give them a bit more time because obviously one person got that right, but uh -huh. some of them were still thinking. Okay, so okay, okay, I will do that. Yeah, Just brilliant. So here, white to move, so you can think sometime and. Yeah, white to move. If we get if we get one correct answer, and we can just say well done to that person, but give them a bit more time so the whole class can think. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Perfect. <clears throat> So here, why to move? Okay, why to move? Yeah, King E5, it's... Hmm. Maybe we can take some more time, yeah? For answers to see. Look at it. Yeah, take, take some more time. Let's not go for anything yet. So, um, kind of scenes on the ball. <laughs> now let's wait for some more people to think about the answer yeah okay why to move i see that gonzalo said i like king of four but <laughs> it's white to move <laughs> Yeah, right to move. Maybe it's too early in the morning for you, Gonzalo. <laughs> <laughs> so, more or less, everybody said, like, look at fate. Mm -hmm. King five, Joseph, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've had Rook F8, we've had King E5. Any other suggestions <clears throat> before we go through the answer? King D4, it's not possible to move the king to D4. <laughs> Okay, probably time to go through it then, Marin. Uh, maybe go through King E5 first. Um, King E5, yeah, King E5 is the first answer somebody said. And now King E5, I think King of 3 Again, it's a shouldering. And now maybe I need to lose tempo a bit, for instance, Rook F8 check. But in this case, I can just play King E3. And now it's shouldering. And what else he can play? Maybe King D4. But in this case, I can push. G3 and King D3, G2. And now again, I need to lose tempo with white. I cannot go near near pawn and I need to play maybe King D2, but just this. Look at fate, King G3, it's a draw. And I think it's obvious, yeah? For instance, this and um, Queen and <laughs> it's a draw, yeah? Uh, so King E5 would be a mistake. I think Rook F8, what uh, ma uh, ma mainly uh, players said, like, Rook F8 is excellent move because now it's it's I'm cutting the king and there is no I cannot make shouldering with with black king so king rook F8 and what to do now king H2 maybe I can again ask answer yeah I'll answers in the chat please because that's good yeah. so what should what white play here because nobody wrote the full variation out they just wrote the first move so yeah white maybe, maybe we can go from, from move to move yeah good idea king E5. Mm -hmm. E5, um, what to do now in G3? King E5, yeah, exactly. King mm -hmm. E5, G3. Mm -hmm. King F4, G2, somebody said. Rook G8, and what to do now G1? Now I think it's quite instructive part. 
again, it's not not easy. Okay, take your time. We'll take give your you time, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a couple of minutes on this. King G3, and what to do now on King G3 if I play King F1? You try and give us the full variation, not just yeah, you, the first you can move. Give, you can give the full variation, yeah, exactly. Uh, king G3, King F1, there is one answer. Uh, rook f8, king g1, rook g8, but on rook g8, maybe I can play king h1 in that line. And that's in response to your answer, Kushal. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we can put like king g3, king f1, check, king g1, and how to win now. Dylan's at rook e8, hmm. but I need to to have uh, to have full line rook f2. Somebody said, but what is rook happening with rook f2? Two, but if king h1, you can't play rook takes g2 because it's stale, mate. So yeah, be exactly. careful. Maybe I can put like that. Show them, yeah. King g1, and now it's completely draw, yeah, because of stalemate. So this this is the trick in the position. Okay, king h3. I think on king h3, I can play king h1. So, yeah, some more answers come through there. Um, Aaron and Kenneth and Austin. So we can have a look Austin, at those. Yeah, mm, still, I don't have the solution. Uh, it's good to keep thinking, everyone. You need to be challenged. Yeah. Maybe you can just tell them why um, their answers are wrong. Maybe just with arrows, uh -huh. Kenneth uh, and Austin, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. If I play, okay, I don't see one one line. Uh, King H. What to do now? For instance, uh -huh. Rook Eight, King H One, Rook J. Exactly. Matthew said like correct, correct, correct answer. Very good, very good. I think that's Charlie. He's just on his dad's account. Well done, Charlie. <laughs> um, uh, exactly. Rook a8 is the best move. Maybe we can put that. Rook a8. And now I'm threatening to give mate, of course. And now King h1. This is like the right way. Rook h8. King g1. And now I'm going to Rook h2. And there is no stalemate. Yeah. This is very important. I need to play. Also, it was possible in this position to play maybe that move, but rook eight, it's a matter of taste. Yeah, it's, it's the same. Check, check. So what about wasting a move and then going around the back? Exactly, I need, you need to spend one, one tempo and and then uh, then I'm going to rook h2. Yeah, fork exactly. power, I think rook f6 works as well for the same idea. But uh, I think with rook f8 immediately, there is a, there was a lot of good solutions, you know, and I think they sold very good, very good. Yeah, and it's, should we have a look at some of the wrong answers there? Because there's a couple of questions. So Gonzalez asked, what happens if rook f2 and king um, f3? Uh, in this moment, yeah? You mean? Yeah, I think so. I think no, I think he means instead of rook f7, rook f2. Uh, rook f2, yeah, we said already, I think. Rook yeah, F3 but is... then I think he wants to play king f3, but black just promotes. Yeah, black yeah. just promotes. Maybe queen, yeah. yeah, I can do queen. Okay, let's have a look if there's any other questions that we haven't answered. You can raise your hand if you want to verbally ask us. That's absolutely fine. I'll just unmute you. Um, so it is quite a tricky position, so I don't want it, um, us to go for it so fast. So has anyone got any questions they want to ask? Um, don't be shy. Um, Zoe's asked Rook H8. Rook H8, uh, it's possible, but I think uh, I didn't make something because I can play King of One, you see. And now the thing is that I need to go to Rook F8 again. And I didn't make improvement because Rook H2 is not, of course, possible. If you play Rook A8, I will promote. And uh, Rook G8, we have one question. Rook G8, okay. Uh -huh. Rook G8, this is like interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, King H1 and then King F2. Is King F2. I think this is also a possible solution, yeah. 
Yeah, that looks winning, doesn't it? <laughs> it's also a good one, yeah. Very good. Yeah, well Very done, good. Kershaw. Um, any more questions or anyone that doesn't understand um, want to ask? It, it is quite tricky. These positions are hard and you're going to get sent all the material so you can play them out at home afterwards. Yeah. Um, well done if you got that. And it's about avoiding that stalemate trick. Exactly. Um, this is like uh, very typical in these rook endgames, especially against pawns and this king edge one, rook f2. And uh, it, uh, it happens, you know, maybe if somebody doesn't have so much time, it can it can make this mistake and play king edge one, you know, and uh, we should avoid this. If you know this, I think we will go, we will spend one tempo, we will play like rook g8 in this, this moment, in this position. But I think it's excellent move, rook f8, you know, and with these two two examples, one winning for white and one draw, I think we we made it very very good uh, thing on this topic, you know, of shouldering. And Sarah, if if you like, we, we can move a little bit uh, more. Yeah. Um. So hopefully you understand this idea of um blocking yeah, maybe, your opponent's maybe king back. out. I think Carsten Muller calls it the body check. It's also called shouldering, and it's this idea that. You know, you don't do the most obvious move. You make a move and you block your opponent's king from getting in um, to its desired square. So it can be a bit counterintuitive because in these positions, most people just want to get the pawn rolling forward and it makes sense to put the king um, to support it. But a lot of the time, it's not actually the right move. So do take your time in these rookie games and have a look and see what's going on. Exactly. Um, yeah, okay, great. Thanks, Marin. Uh, we can move exactly. on. Exactly, and always, always we need to have precise calculation. But if you know idea, you know, if you see, if you know this idea of Rook F8, then, then we, we can calculate. And it's important to calculate, but also not, know this idea, this, what you mentioned, yeah, okay. Okay, so maybe we can go further. Maybe that would be uh, slightly, slightly more tough, you know, so. Yeah, this is tough, so take your time. Take your time, this is like, uh, we are going from easier examples to the harder ones. And now white to go, you can, you can take some time and we need, you need to understand the position. And so you can think for some time about that. Yeah, white's obviously a pawn white up and move. trying to win, but there's lots of tricks here. First, we not need to evaluate uh, who is winning now. Is it draw or it's winning? The rook d6 check, it's one. One question. Okay, maybe we can. We let's can. Um, wait. Let's give them a few minutes um, yeah. before we go through any of the answers. This but is definitely very hard. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to solve it instantly. You need to do some real calculation here. But we will learn from this example one very, very, very important uh, method in, in Rook and Games. <clears throat> Fort power, it's white to move. White to move, exactly. Yeah, so king c6 isn't isn't a legal move for white. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I see some answers. Hmm. 
So I see the most answers are king f3. And now I see king e3 also, but I think. And there's king g3 as well, but one move is not really enough here. You need to put some detail. It's yes, good to exactly. see Kenneth exactly. put some detail with his answer. And Kushal's written some as well, which is good. Now with white, we need to, to make Lucina here, yeah? It's because we cut the king, but... Yeah, we all know Lucina, don't we? There is chance to, to have Lucina, but... And I think... Sarah, you can tell when, when we can we can start to work on this. I see yeah, some... I think it's someone. a good time to start. They've had a bit of time to think about it, so... Um... So, first I will put king f3. I think this is the the most of answer king of the I think this is mistake and now again it, we are analytically working with this position so we can check that position for, for black what is now the best black sensor that happened in the game so if you were playing black here and your opponents played king f3 how can you defend this position King C6, six, uh, six, 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 but what to do now? King 6 6, we need may, maybe a little bit more lines. And we are trying to stop White's King from coming forward as well using another method. Mm -hmm. King C6, I see Dylan set, but on King C6, maybe we need to do a little bit more, yeah? More in details. Yeah, we'll come back to move one in a moment, Kenneth. But do you know why then? Um, so what, okay, what can I see, black I see play one, here? One, one very good answer. Yeah, Kenneth, I think you've got you've got the hang of this. Um, you know exactly what black wants to play, and you've stopped it. So, so um, Kenneth, what, what do you think? What is now the best for black? Rook H4, exactly. And this is like very very important uh, method. It's cutting. We are cutting the king, yeah? It also, we can use that for win, but in this case, with, with cutting, we can uh, we can make the draw. Okay, maybe we can go further a little bit. Yeah, Rook sure. H4, Rook um, H4 and And again. also, just to say, now that you know Black wants to play Rook H4, that will help you with your first move, so you can come back and edit your first move. But yeah, let's talk about what happens after Rook H4 then in this Exactly. Position. So our idea is just to come with king on f4. If you come with king on f4, I think it's winning. And now black player in the game, excellent move, rook h4. And now I cannot advance with my king. And in the game, happened like e6. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a great move, yeah. What I see in the chat, uh, king g3, it's excellent. This is like the winning. But what to do now on e6? Now we can take some more time. I think it's also very important moment. Black defend. How to how to defend it? Black. We found it's like rook h4, like excellent way. And now we need to go a little bit further. Yeah, I see a lot of answers like king g3. It's, it's correct. It's it's a first the right first move. I see now rook h6. But what to do now, rook h6? Maybe on rook h6, I can play rook e5 even. Rook h6, rook e5. Now I'm threatening to push e7 and I will promote. I think queen. it's the last. <laughs> yeah. Rook h6, rook e5, I think it's winning for. And now on rook h8, we can play. E7, rook E8, and bring the king to F6. Yeah, the whole point of rook H4 was to stop white's king from moving forward. Now I see some answer. King C7, cannot. But why Why to do king C7? He said to stop rook d8. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is the right, ex excellent, Kenneth, yeah? Exactly this. Mm -hmm. King c7, and later we will come back. King c7, and now 
it's excellent to stop rook d8. For instance, if he push e7, what we can do on e7, this is like, I think, easy, but still, I think it's necessary to know what to do now on e7. Well, you've got to stop the pawn from queening, and there's only really one way. <laughs> yeah, rook h8, and I will, I will take the, the pawn. But now, I, you see, I cannot improve my my king, uh, my king to f4, and uh, my next move with black is probably rook h6, and I will take that pawn with rook h6. So uh, let's check what is happening after rook d7. It's a tricky move. It happened in the game. And what do you think now with rook d7? This is like only important more moment. What to do now with rook d7? Big choice between two moves here. Yeah. You know, king c6 or king c8. <laughs> and can you explain me why king c exactly? I see Gonzalo. And, Ga and Gonzalo answered very, very good. Excellent. King c8 to stop rook d8. This is yeah. excellent, yes. And this year is... and Charlie. Good. <laughs> and it's excellent way, yeah, king c8. And now I our idea is just to play rook h6. And I think he cannot play against this. Mm. It's easy draw what he can do. I just need to bring my king to d8. And if I play, for instance, this move, now I have this. Because now rook e1, what we have, rook e1, it's easy. Just king d8. And now our king is near pawn, and I think we will, we will it's, it's easy draw. Excellent. OK, but now we, we're going back. What do we know king c6? That happened in the game. It's a mistake. I see rook a, uh -huh. is it rook a7 cannot the answer to king c6? Gonzalo again, very good. And king c8 is a mistake which lose the game and rook d8 is the correct answer. Yeah, well done Gonzalo and Joseph. Very good, very good, very good, yeah. Rook d8 and it's not easy, this end game is not easy and our idea is just, just to push the pawn to e7 and what he can do now, rook h7, I think it's only move. But now, what to do now? Which we can go just. Rook h7, king f4, exactly, Joseph. Mm -hmm. King f4, and king f4. And now, king c7, what to do now? King f4, excellent. And what to do now, king c7? Rook f8, I see the answer. Rook e8. Hmm. Mm. Is this the best? Rooks hmm. don't like going in front of past pawns. <laughs> yeah, I think it's rook is excellent because we are cutting the king on c7. This is important. Rook e8, king d6, it's it's easy. Easy draw, yeah. Yeah, maybe just show that on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, rook e8, king d6. Nice. And probably on king f5, I can even play that move. And just check from behind. Check from behind, and he cannot advance his pawn. I will play king e7 in, in case of check. It's easy, easy draw, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. this, this exercise is about cutting the king, so that might give yeah, you a clue. The most important thing, yeah? So, rook a8, rook e8, again, it's not the best. Um, you can't hear fork power. I think. I think everyone can hear, so you might need to reconnect. I'll probably type that to you. So if you can't hear, no point in me saying that. <laughs> um, okay, so. So I didn't see still the, the right answer in the chat. Does king f8, king d6? Rook d5, rook d5 is good, but I also like, yeah, we, we found it. Or maybe, maybe just simple rook d1, yeah, it's. Far so, away, so you can't be attacked by the Black King. Yeah, exactly. And I will come to Lucina. And what is now important to notice is we will check now King F5. Well, okay, well let's maybe... see if they know what they're doing. We shouldn't have given them away. It's Lucina. So what do we do? How do we win? OK, it's still, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is now also important to notice, because you see Black Rook is on the shorter side. So he cannot uh, give check on the rank, 7th rank, 8th rank, and 6th rank. 
if a king is uh, on the other, uh, if rook is from other side and my king is on h7, for instance, then it will be uh, more chances to make a draw. But here I think it's, he cannot give me check, checks from the side. So what to do now on rook h2, for instance? On king f5, uh, king f5, for instance, just a second. Rook e2, how to win now? Would you like, Sarah, that we finish the example till the end, or you, you think here is now is enough? Let's go right to the end, yeah. Uh -huh, right to the end, okay. So king f6, okay, it's, you don't need to spend so much time here. Rook f2, king g7, rook e2, and what king f7, for instance, rook f2, okay, just rook e2, e7. Rook okay, e2, now you should recognize this position. So come on, guys, what do we play here? How do we win? The notation went a bit wrong there, Kenneth. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not so impressed, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's good, Kenneth. Um, First, uh -huh. good Charlotte is on the right way. But just notation, it's rook c1, then. Yeah, some people want to play rook d4 first. But we need to get Before, rid of Black's king. Mm, I think it's, yeah, it's something else is more precise. Mm -hmm. Lots of people wanting to play rook d7. Okay, rook d7, maybe we can first check that. Yeah, good idea. I see, yeah, uh, rook d7. I think there is no improvement because of king c8. And now I cannot push this king from, and uh, my, uh, my king cannot go out from e8. And for instance, if you play that, it's nothing special because we can play like that. And king ca cannot move from e8. So rook d7 would be, wouldn't be the best choice. And now I see uh, fork power, yeah? I see this, <laughs> it's excellent, rook c1. Excellent. Uh, king b6 and now rook c4. And now I will just ask you one more question. What to do now, for instance, on King B5. So we have reached the Lucina position, building a bridge, but now after King B5, what does White play? Rook C7, I see the answer. Mm. Or maybe something even better, Rook C7, mm, it's a good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a winning, but also rook c8 I, I like very much because now on king b6, for instance, I will just play king d7. Check and this, and he cannot stop me from promoting the queen. So what happens after rook e2? Rook e2, just king f6, and now I will I will go with my king to the to the rook, but for instance, so rook f2, of course, not king e5, but <laughs> yeah. king g5, and now I will go Near, near, near the rook and I will promote in the next set, I will take his rook. Yeah, because if rook e2, you can just go e8 equals queen. So we just need to, to see on king b5 what to do, yeah? Uh, but uh, what to do now, for instance, on king b7, rook c4, if you play rook f1, just just to finish the the whole scene. King b7, yeah. King seven, rook d one, king six, exactly. Mm -hmm. And go a little bit further, Kushal. King seven, rook d one, king six. What to do now? Rook one, check. Yeah, I see the right answer. Kenneth, excellent. Yeah, well done, Kenneth. Excellent. King seven, rook d one, check. Check, and of course, we will cover with the rook. Okay, four. And now I think it's good, uh, we checked. And even in the game, uh, Black lost that game. And now we can go to the start. So what, what is now the start winning, winning idea? So our idea is Lucina in this position because we cut the king. 
so in start what is the best be best move for white and now yeah because yeah, now, now you know now you know what black's planning on doing to secure a draw if he plays accurately you need to stop that so what should white play here got to assume your opponent will play the best moves king g3 exactly and now i think it's not necessary to go to go more because we will cut the king and we will come with king on f4 and we will come to the same position i think more or less king g3 exactly and now we will come with king on f4 we will bring our rook to d1 and we will start to push a6 he doesn't have chance to to equalize and it's, Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any questions on that before we move on? Because it is quite complicated. Um, we'll be sending you out the material if you want to have another go. I've got a hand up, actually. Who's that? Zoe. Um, yeah, I'll allow you to talk. Zoe, you can ask. What would you like to say? Well, if you go forward in the King F3 move, mm -hmm. um, 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 in one of the positions, what would happen after work f8 it's when the pawn would be on e6 king would be probably on c7 and the black crook would be on f7 i think so okay no, so marina i think she's talking about the king f3 line that we showed yeah. so we can go further a little, little bit e6 king c7 you mean in this moment look this summer check is this Wouldn't moment exactly or... a little bit forward? Forward, okay, king c6, and now we'll be eight. Yeah, mm -hmm. just after, just when, just when uh, the work was on h7. Exactly, king f4. Yep, forward one step. King seven. Yeah, what if now he played rook f8? What? Ah, you mean in this moment? Look mm -hmm. at fate, and this is like this whole question, so maybe everybody can answer on this. I think I showed it already, but I think it's it's quite useful and quite instructive to see what what to do now. Very good question. I think it's it's a very good question, so very good. So maybe everybody can answer. A good questions, are we okay? So what should we do here? King d6, king f5, rook h1. Very good, Kenneth. Very good. Rook e7 would be wrong, I think. Rook e7 is wrong because my, 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 not, my rook is now passive and I can play king e5 and I will win. My next move is king f6. He cannot improve. If he play rook h7, what, what do we have now? <laughs> it's easy, huh? <laughs> but still. He's going to be first okay. to tell us, yeah, Kenneth, well done. <laughs> yeah, very, good. very good, Kenneth. And I think Kenneth was right. Instead of uh, rook e7, king d6, this is the answer zone. And now, for instance, on this rook h1, I already mentioned that. That idea, and now I will bring my king on e7, or I would play rook f1, and I will I will take the pawn. I think this is the answer, or rook f8. Uh, I also have another question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can we please go a bit forward? Okay. So this is like a typical draw. Rook F8, it's a mistake because we need to cut the king. All the time it's about cutting the thing. This example is about the cutting the, the king. Very important in Rook M game. Because if my uh, king is active, you know, then, then I have more chances to make a draw. Yeah? And I will make the draw in this position. Okay, so, so we need to go further. Rook D1, Rook H2. When which moment you would like to to check? Uh, forward, please. Forward. Forward. Uh yeah. Here, instead of king king g eight, what if white would play king e seven? Yeah, I think e seven is. It's also good, you see. It's also a good move. Uh, but with this move, I'm, I'm immediately coming. For instance, on King G7, it's. I think it's a little bit uh, maybe faster just Rook F7 because my king will now come to the to the E8, for instance, immediately. You see. Oh. That's the reason. But I think King E7 it's also good. But 
In any case, on rook f2, I need to play in one moment. For instance, king seven, I, now I need to spend one tempo. For instance, on rook e2, I need to play again king f7, you see. And for instance, this and king eight. It's also good. It's also winning. And I think okay. what is very important, for instance, on rook h2, it's a shorter side, you see. That is very important. It's shorter side, and now my rook cannot, I cannot uh, hold my rook with checks, you know, because it's shorter side. It's very important to understand. It's a good for white. So I think uh, king e7 is also good move, yeah, for sure. Yeah, great question, Zoe. Does anyone else want to ask anything before we move on? Because this is tricky and rook end games are hard. Um, yeah. But thanks for those questions, Zoe. I'm sure Thank there's other people yeah, that didn't it's, understand. It's a good question. It's a good question. Very good. Um, just raise your hand or ask in the chat if you've got any questions. Other than that, we'll move on. Okay, we can go maybe for to the start. Okay, let's move on then, Marin. No questions. Mm -hmm. Now I think it, we will come to something very, very interesting. Ah, and they've seen this. So let's see if you've done your homework for July properly. <laughs> <laughs> Full solution, not just the first move. White to play. You've seen it in your booklet and you've also seen it in my lecture. So white to play. Try and explain why, not just the first move, please. Full variation. Can you give Kushal the whole line? What is happening? Why? Why Rukitu? And let's wait for some more people to give the answer before we go for it. Mm -hmm. I see more answers are rookie two, but also I see one answer for rookie one. And so I think we, we saw a lot of answers, correct answers. Yeah, I so think. maybe we go through rookie one and rookie two and what the difference is. What is the them? difference? But I think I see this. But what to do now, rookie one? You see, Zoe. Said like rookie one, and also I see one more, one more answer rookie one. What is now idea? I think it's connected with our first two examples. That, that one. Hmm? Why? What to do now, rookie one? We can we can see the answer. Oh, it's black play now. Yeah, exactly. I see the correct answer. Not king f4. King f4 would be a mistake, yeah? Big mistake, I think. Hmm. E4, yeah. Because of king f4, it's again, we don't have, it's shouldering, it's, it's shouldering method. King e6. And now on e4, king d5 is coming. We'll lose the pawn. But the right, right move is on rookie one, it's e4. And we don't have any smart move here. And we need to spend one, one tempo with the rook, but then we can, we can play even king f4. Yeah. 
King of five, just a second, King of seven. And now King of four, it's so what do you think in, in this in this position what to do now on e, after e4 king e7? What is now the best move? See if you understand the concept of shouldering. Yeah, exactly. What is now the best move? I see Kushan, Tio, exactly. And what to do now, for instance, okay. I see a lot of answers, king e5. Very good, we need to outflank, it's it's a correct. Correct by king e5, and now king d7, what to do now? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. King d5 again, keeping the the position, uh, keeping the opposition. I think it's it's very important, and there is no improvement here. But what is now? For instance, I think this is lost. King of, instead of king of five, king of four, white's lost. Keeping the opposition here, made a very good, very good answer. I don't think you meant white's lost. I think you meant black. Uh, we can see, we can't see Leech. Oh, yeah, let's come back. Sorry about some. It's all right. Don't worry. So, what should White play here after King F4? I see good answers here. Yeah. And now, again, I didn't make sure that, yeah? No. King d5 and it's lost, yeah, exactly. And king e2. Excellent, very good. Um, just show king e6, because lots of people wanted to do king e6 instead of I, king e6. I think it's same, it's same. We just need to bring by our king to, to d5. It's the same, king d6 or king. King e6 is king, keeping king, yeah. On the opposite side, exactly, Joseph. Exactly, this is the right thing. We just need to keep Keep the king so I think this is like easy win. King e6 or king d6 is the same. E, e3 and now king d5. Exactly. And now I think we, we can go to the start. Rook e2 is excellent move because you see what is now also important to mention. For instance, on e4, if you want to have a position, we need to play rook e2. You see. But now our king, uh, now, now our, our rook is on the in the worst position. After uh, rook e2, he can play just king f4, and after king f3, we will gain one tempo and we will make a draw. And this, this is the main thing, because we need to, to, to earn some tempo. And now rook e2, e4, and now what to do now on e4? Yeah, that's good, Charlie. Well done. Very good, yeah. Can f. Exactly. Marcos. A lot of good answers, rookie one, exactly. Mm -hmm. And now you see our king, uh, we can earn tempo. What to do now, king e5? Now, rook is an excellent position and we have opposition, but what to do now on king e5? What do you think? Yeah, very very good answers. Yeah. Good row here. Well, well done, well done. A lot of a lot of good answers. Uh, king is seven, yes. And now black need need to to lose opposition. Yeah. And for instance, on king d4, what to do now? King f6. Exactly. We are going to the to the opposite side. Yeah. Exactly. King f6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think. Rest is easy. King of six. King of five and again connected to our first two examples. Very good. Yeah. Um, Sarah, do, do we have time for one more? Study? Um probably not because we've only got three minutes, but I've got a good question in the um 
the question and answer and i think i know the answer so um somebody's asked if um does rookie three work as well and i think it does actually for the same reasons but i'll just get you to confirm that please so um uh, where we should go go back to the start mm -hmm. and then rookie three and i think it's it's the same idea because we just got that tempo right you can go rookie mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. very good answer mm -hmm. okay maybe we can check on E4, it's obvious, you know, so yeah. rookie, one, rookie one is happening. Very, very good question. But what do we now get for? Yeah, because it does hit the rook, which it wouldn't do if the rook was on E2. Um, Probably rookie one, yeah? Rookie one. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's just simpler to go rookie two in the first place, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think this should work as well. E4, exactly. It's working, yeah. Yeah. So and anonymous attendee, yes, it does, uh, yes. I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a link again. But the rookie two is somehow more natural, yeah? Yeah. It's it's a, it's a more natural. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit like the rook end games you were showing before. There are other ways you can draw, but the simplest way is is often the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, do you want to go rookie two straight away? Um, yeah, yeah, rookie two straight away, because then you've got that tempo um, mm. that you need. Um, that's a really important position. Um, so if you don't understand it, then do play it out after this session and really try and get to grips and understand it. I mean, in this session, we've covered shouldering, um, cutting the king and outflanking. And hopefully you're really, really understanding those now. But if you've got any questions, um, you can send them to Alex and me and we'll be happy to help. Um, it's almost the end of the first session. We'll take a 15 minute break and then um, you can rejoin at quarter past. But thank you very much, Marin. That was fantastic. Um, it's really good to have your Grandmaster insight into these positions. Thank you um, very much, Sarah. And thank you very, very much, uh, everybody, for joining. I saw a lot of good lines, a lot of good answers. So I think it's, 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 it's a good, uh, they're, they're improving. You're improving, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're good players and they work hard. Um, so, um, yeah.